in science in general, there's just not a lot of really new, innovative things. This is an example of something that was really innovative and new that had never been, been done before. My name is Karim Aziz, and this is the story on how the flood inundation model was made for alligator gar habitat needs. I was in the break room one day, and, and Clint came in with this idea. Uh, we need to figure out uh, where these gar are spawning, when they're spawning, and if there's available habitat for them to spawn at. That's the problem. There's not a lot of data that's out there about that. and. Uh, Yeah, for their, for their spawning needs. Can we do that here in the office? And I said, uh, yeah, let's look. I'll look for the data and I will work on figuring out how this is gonna happen. Well, if anybody can do it, it's him because he is the man who draws rivers. These flood events are important because Gar will trigger and spawn at these flood pulse events. So I started to look at some uh, programs that are available for flood inundation, and they just kept crashing. So I started to think of, a, of uh, an alternate way of doing it. It was at an American Fishery Society meeting, and I sat down with Dr. Tom Hardy, who is the internationally known person for in-stream flow studies. And I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about generating these theoretical water surface elevations and putting them on a digital elevation model. And I drew it out on a napkin with cross sections and everything, and he goes, yeah, it looks great, go with it. So our primary uh, data sources were uh, Texas Regional Water District, the Texas Natural Resource Information System, and Texas Parks and Wildlife. We were able to then uh, zero in at the preferred habitat type that alligator gar are looking for. I was able to go out and get GPS points on the edges of the water, but it gets better. During one of these flood events, Matt, who works at the uh, Richland Creek Wildlife Management Area, was out walking the grounds, and he happened upon these gar that were courting, and he thought, hey, someone's gonna wanna see this. And uh, that's when I got excited about it. I overlaid that GPS point on top of the model, and I sent that to Matt, and I said, this is what the model is saying that the habitat is, how close is it? And he wrote back and said, that's what's out there. Clint and I got back together and he says, hey, this is great. This shows us where the habitat is, how much of the habitat there is, and what kind of habitat there is. This is gonna be, this is gonna help with management practices for alligator gar. Models are fun to develop and fun to work with. They really are sometimes. <laughs> but then when you get something like this, that what the models are predicting is close to what's going on in reality, well, that was like the icing on the cake for me.